I have a corpse flower in my greenhouse and I have been dying to tissue culture it. If you're not familiar with what a corpse flower is, it is the world's largest inflorescence. It actually smells like rancid rotten meat when it blooms and it only blooms about once every 10 years. Mine is on its second leaf cycle right now, which means I only have eight more years until it blooms. In my research, I found that a guy by the name of Hans Kohlenbach claims to have successfully tissue cultured the corpse flower back in the 19th. 80s. When I learned that, I was like, perfect, I'm just gonna shoot this guy an email and he'll tell me exactly what he did and it'll be awesome. Wrong. Hans Kohlenbach is dead. Which just means that I need to figure out a protocol that is going to work for the corpse flower myself. I wasn't able to find a protocol on Google Scholar or ResearchGate for the corpse flower itself, but I did find one for the voodoo lily, which is basically the smaller cousin of the corpse flower. This is an interesting protocol because they actually used a piece of the corm of the plant to produce new seedlings. And then they took leaf cuttings from the seedlings that resulted that were already aseptic and they put them into tissue culture media to grow callus tissue on the leaves. I don't wanna dig up the plant because it is actually actively growing right now. In the past 14 days, it has gone from being like this big to literally as tall as me and I'm 5'10", so it is tall. So I'll be using leaves as my explants. Actively growing parts of a plant typically include cells that have the potential for further differentiation and further development. They were using BA, NAA, and 2,4-D and I don't have 2,4-D. I've made a conscious decision not to use it because it is a little too sketchy and I don't feel great having it in my house. I'm just going to be trying to see if one milligram per liter of BA and one milligram per liter of NAA will work to grow callus on the leaf cuttings. This is bootleg science. Please remember to like and subscribe. I already prepared the tissue culture media last night. Right now I'm going to head over to my kitchen and sterilize the forceps and the scissors and paper towels and basically everything that goes underneath the laminar flow hood to get ready to do the transfer later today. Welcome to the voiceover. I take some leaf cuttings from the plant the protocol was using leaf tissue samples that were already sterile, but my plant has been living outside, so I need to sterilize the leaves by placing them in a mixture of 10% bleach and 90% water. I get a lot of questions about the bleach. The bleach that I use is Clorox, and it contains 7.5% sodium hypochlorite. Before I cut the explants into smaller pieces, I rinse each leaf sample in distilled water. I usually autoclave the water beforehand, but today I just completely forgot. <laughs> I've done this before though, and I think that it'll be fine. The tools are really hot from the infrared sterilizer, so if you saw me dipping the scissors or the forceps directly into the container of water, that was why. I'm obsessed with the Bacti Zapper, and I'm so happy that I don't have to use an alcohol lamp anymore, because after every single YouTube video I posted, my dad would text me and say, that is so dangerous, and <laughs> now I don't get those texts anymore. I place about three explants into each container of media. I really like the deli containers, but the condensation can be really annoying. I'll be doing updates on the corpse flower tissue culture in my next vlog, so make sure that you're subscribed if you're not already. I've been loving making the shorter videos. Here are what the final products look like. I ended up with about six containers. If you're interested in trying tissue culture for the first time, I recommend ordering supplies from Plant Cell Technology. I have a code with them for 10% off your order, which is plants in jars, all in caps. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.